हेलो एवरी वन दिस इज डॉक्टर सतीश एस बोरनारे डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जेनेटिक्स एंड प्लान बिल्डिंग के के वाग कॉलेज ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर नासिक टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न द टॉपिक फंक्शंस ऑफ इकोसिस्टम सो फ्रेंड्स दिस फंक्शनल एट्रीब्यूट्स ऑफ इकोसिस्टम कंसिस्ट ऑफ डिफरेंट एट्रीब्यूट्स सो दिस एवरी इकोसिस्टम परफॉर्म अंडर द नेचुरल कंडीशंस इन अ सिस्टमेटिक वे and it receives the energy from the sun and passes it on through the various biotic component and in fact all life depend on this flow of the energy and this is nothing but the functional attributes and besides this energy various nutrients and water are also import are so required are imparted one for the life processes which are exchanged by the biotic component within themselves and with their uh, abiotic component also within or outside the ecosystem and these functional attributes are described as as follows first one is trophic structure food chain and food webs then energy flow in ecosystem then cyclic cycling of this nutrients that is bio geo chemical cycles then primary and secondary production of the ecosystem and ecosystem development and regulation so let us see one by one first trophic structure this trough means the nourishment the structure and function of the ecosystem are very closely related and influence each other so intimately that they need to be studied together so the flow of energy is mediated through a series of feeding relationship in a definite sequence of pattern which is known as food chain so the flow of energy from one trophic level to the another trophic level through the uh, different organisms is nothing but the food chain and the producers and consumers are arranged in the ecosystem in definite manner and their interaction along with the population size are expressed together as a trophic structure so this is nothing but the trophic structure means different levels of the producers and consumers are, are arranged in a definite marriage manner and their interaction along with their population size this all together are expressed in the trophic structure and each food level is known as trophic level and the amount of living matter at each trophic level at the given time is known as standing crop or standing biomass so standing crop or standing biomass is the amount of living matter at each trophic level that is at producer level or consumer level in a given time so this is the standing crop or standing biomass then food chains the sequence of eating and being eaten so this is the sequence of eating and being eaten that is means the every individual is eaten and also they eat on the others so the sequence of eating and being eaten in the ecosystem is known as food chain and all organism living or dead are potential food for some other organism and thus there is essentially no waste in the functioning of the natural ecosystem so every organism having the capacity or having a potential source of food for other either they are living or dead and some common examples of the simple food chains are the grass grasshopper frog snake and hawk this is the example of grassland ecosystem in which the grasses are eaten by grasshopper is grasshopper are eaten by frog and frog by snake and snake by hawk so this is the sequential food chain of the grassland ecosystem then in case of arctic tundra where the producers are lichens then uh, consumers are reindeer and the uh, carnivores or top carnivores are the man so this is the uh, different type of food chains then what are the types of food chains so the food chains are divided into two types mainly first one is a grazing food chains as its name indicate that it starts with the green plants that is primary producers and culminates into the carnivores so in case of grazing food chains it starts with the grazing that is green plants for example grass here grass rat snake and eagle 
so this is the <coughs> grazing food gel in which the grass is the producer and the tertiary car culminates in the tertiary consumers or tertiary carnivores then uh, detritus food chain it start with the dead organic matter which detritus and decomposers consume so partially decomposed dead, dead organic matter and even the decomposers are consumed by the detritus and their predators so in this case of detritus food chain it starts with the uh, dead organic matter for example the fallen leaves or dead leaves which are eaten by the woodlouse and this again this woodlouse is eaten by the blackbird that is tough carnivorous so this is the example of detritus food chain then food web so the uh, what is this food chain food web means so this food web means the interlocking pattern of various interlinked food chains in the ecosystem are known as food web so friends the in short the food webs are nothing but the different types of interlocking uh, food interlocking pattern of various interlinked food chain when this number of food chains are dependent with each other they are called as food web and this food webs are likewise in this diagram we can see the producers uh, single producers are eaten by different uh, primary secondary and tertiary consumers and the top carnivores so this is the interlinking pat interlocking pattern of the various interlo interlinked food chains and that's why it is called as food web the food chain in ecosystem are rarely found to operate in isolate isolated linear sequence rather they are operated as a uh, group or a multi linear uh, sequence and thus the food web is a network of uh, food uh, chains where different types of organisms are connected at different trophic level so that there are numbers of option of eating and being eaten at each trophic level so this is the uh, one major created by the nature so that no individuals remain the uh, hungry or remain starved due to the unavailability of the uh, food so this food web provide the options number of options for the individual for eating and being eating, eaten at each trophic level then significance of the food chain and food webs so these food chains and food webs play a significant role in ecosystem because two most important functions are uh, done by this uh, food chains or food webs first one is a uh, uh, energy flow and nutrient cycling these two major functions are done by this food chains and food webs and these food chains are also help in maintaining the regulating the population size of the different animal thus help in maintaining the ecological balance so these are the two important aspect or important functions that food chain and food web perform so food chains show any property of biological magnification of some chemicals there are some pesticides heavy metals and other chemicals which are non biodegradable in nature and such chemicals are not decomposed by microorganisms and they keep on passing from one trophic level to another and at each successive trophic level they keep on increasing in the concentration and this phenomenon is known as biomagnification or biological magnification so this biomagnification or bio mag biological magnification is nothing but the the some of the chemicals that are not decomposed by organ microorganisms are passed from one trophic level to another and their concentration is increased in the ecosystem so are the, so that this phenomenon is called as bio magnification or biological magnification then ecological pyramids another next one function of the ecosystem is ecological pyramid so what are the ecological pyramids this ecological pyramids are nothing but the graphical representation of the trophic structure and functions of the ecosystem starting with the producer at the base and successive trophic levels forming the apex is known as 
ecological pyramid and as its name indicate its shape is pyramidic shape and this is the graphic representation of different trophic structure and function of the ecosystem at the base there is producer and top, top level or at the apex there is the um, consumers uh, uh, carnivorous so this is the pyramidal shape known as eco ecological pyramids there are three types of ecological pyramids first one pyramid of numbers so this pyramid of numbers represent the number of individuals of the organisms at each trophic level means here the number of the each individual is represented by this uh, e ecological pyramid and we may have upper right or inverted pyramid of the numbers depending upon the type of ecosystem and food chain so this pyramid of numbers may be upright or may be inverted is depending upon the type of ecosystem and food chain you have studied so in case of grassland ecosystem we can see here the pyramid of number is upright in which the number of producers are large in quantity while the top carnivores are less in, less in quantity so less in numbers so this is the pyramid of numbers then in case of the parasitic food chain the uh, pyramid of number is inverted pyramid as we can see in the diagram the uh, hyperparasite that is top carnivores are the more in number as compared to the producer so this is the pyramid of numbers in grassland ecosystem it is upright while in case of parasitic food chain it is inverted one. then next is pyramid of biomass so it is based upon the total biomass that is dry matter at each trophic level in the food chain so the pyramid of biomass is uh, representing the total biomass or dry matter at each trophic level of the food chain and the pyramid of biomass can also be upright or inverted so in case of this grassland ecosystem this pyramid of biomass is up, upright as we can see in the diagram so there are more number of producers while less number of carnivores but in case of this pond ecosystem the pyramid of biomass is inverted as we can see in the diagram also so the total biomass of the big fishes are more as compared to the phytoplankton which is the producer so this pond ecosystem in case of pond ecosystem the pyramid of biomass is inverted in shape then last one is a pyramid of energy so amount of energy present at each trophic level is considered as a for this type of pyramid and pyramid of energy gives pyramid of energy gives the best representation of the uh, trophic relationship and it's always upright so this pyramid of energy is always up upright at every successive trophic level there is a huge loss of energy nearly about 90 percent in the form of heat respiration etc thus at each next higher level only 10 percent of the energy is passes on thus that's why this pyramid of energy is always upright here pyramid of energy is always upright we can see there are more number of uh, producers than the top carnivores and that's why he, here is the pyramid of energy is always upright next energy flow in the ecosystem so the flow of energy in the ecosystem takes place to the food chain and in this energy flow which keeps ecosystem going the most important feature of the energy flow is that it is unidirectional or in a one way only so this is the most important feature of the energy flow is is this energy flow is always unidirectional that is in one way and it follows the laws of thermodynamics so the first law of thermodynamics states that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed but it can be transformed from one form to another form the solar energy captured by the green plant that is producers get converted into the biochemical energy of the plants and later on later into the uh, that consumers so this is the thermo, uh, law of thermodynamics first law which state that 
the energy can neither be created nor be destroyed and in case of the ecosystem the solar energy is trapped, trapped by producers and then this energy is converted into biochemical energy and later on passed to the consumers to the carnivores and again released by the decomposers and re again reached to the plants so this is the uh, first law of the thermodynamics which illustrate the energy flow in ecosystem then second law of the thermodynamics state that energy dissipates as it's used or in the other words it get converted from a more concentrated to disperse form at every level there is about 90 percent of the loss of energy and the energy transport from one tropic level to the other is only about 10 percent so as we can see earlier the energy transfer from one tropic level to the another tropic level is only 10 percent so this uh, second law of thermodynamics alternatively called as 10 percent law so this is the true fact in case of in each and every ecosystem and this second law explain the energy flow in ecosystem also then ne next major uh, function of the ecosystem is nutrient cycling so this ecosystem perform this function besides the energy flow other important functional attribute of ecosystem is nutrient cycling so this ecosystem having a role in nutrient cycling also and these nutrients are like carbon nitrogen sulfur oxygen hydrogen phosphorus etc move in a circular path through the biotic and abiotic components and therefore known as biogeochemical cycles so this uh, uh, ecosystem prove to the uh, cycling of the nutrients through this biogeochemical cycle and water also moves in this cycle so known as hydrological cycle and the nutrients to move through this food chain and ultimately reach the detritus component containing dead organic matter whereas various microorganisms carry out the decomposition so the nutrient cycling is the major role of the ecosystem so in detail let us see one by one first is a nitrogen cycle so nitrogen is present in the atmosphere as n2 in large amount and roughly near about 78 percent of the nitrogen is present in the atmosphere which is fixed either by the physiological process of lightening or biologically by the some bacteria or cyanobacteria that is blue green algae so these are the different ways by which the nitrogen is fixed which is present in the atmosphere in the diagram also we can see the nitrogen is taken up by plants and used in the metabolism for the biosynthesis of amino acids proteins vitamins and passes through the food chain so these plants utilizes this uh, uh, atmosphere nitrogen not directly but indirectly and the uh, nitrogen utilized by the plants for the biosynthesis of different amino acids proteins and vitamins and it passes through the different uh, food chains after the death of that plants and animals the organic nitrogen is decomposed by several ammonifying bacteria or denitrifying bacteria which convert them into ammonia nitrites and nitrates again these uh, nitrates nitrites and ammonia are used by plants for their their utilization and remaining bacteria or some bacteria converts these uh, molecular nitrogen or n2 which is released uh, back from these nitrites or uh, by the process of the denitrification or the denitrification bacteria convert this uh, nitrogen into molecular n2 or nitrogen and again this cycle continue so this is the nitrogen cycle next one is a carbon cycle so carbon is in the form of carbon dioxide and as we all know that on the atmosphere the carbon dioxide play a very important role in a plant respiration so this carbon dioxide in, uh, is taken by the green plants as a raw material for photosynthesis 
and through which the variety of carbohydrates and other organic substances are produced. So the plants utilizes this uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and through the food chain it moves up moves and ultimately organic carbon present in the dead matter is returned to the atmosphere as a carbon dioxide by microorganisms so the by the process different process this carbon is again returned to the atmosphere as a carbon dioxide through these microorganisms and respiration by all organism produces carbon dioxide while the latter is used by the plants so this carbon dioxide is again utilized by the plants so this carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is utilized by plant and again by the bacteria they are uh, they are pro uh, producing the uh, trap carbon dioxide and again return back to the atmosphere so this is the continue carbon cycle and in recent year carbon dioxide levels have increased in the atmosphere due to the burning of fossil fuels or some human intervention which has caused the imbalance of this natural cycle and world today is facing a serious problem of global warming due to this enhanced carbon dioxide emissions. So here human intervention play a greater role and which disturb this carbon cycle leading to the global warming due to this more concentration of carbon dioxide. Then Next is a phosphorus cycle. The reservoir of the phosphorus is lies in the rocks or fossils and which is excavated by the man and used as a fertilizer. So we, for agriculture, we are using most of the phosphatic fertilizer, phosphatic fertilizer. They are in the form of fossils or rocks and farmer use this phosphatic fertilizer indiscriminately and as a result, excess of phosphates are lost as a runoff which causes the problem of eutrophication. So in this diagram also we can see the phosphorus, excess phosphorus is leach and reach up to the uh, ocean or deep sediments so it is uh, not utilized by plants or animals and get out of this phosphorus cycle. A good proportion of Phosphates moving with the surface run reaches to the ocean and are lost into the deep sediments. And our limited supply of phosphorus lying in the phosphate rocks on of the earth are over exploited by the man and large part is taken out the normal cycle due to the losses into the oceans. Once the uh, phosphorus reaches into deep sediment we cannot use and thus it is uh, lost by the man and so human being are making the phosphorus cycle a cyclic so when this human intervention leads to the break in the phosphorus cycle and making it a cyclic otherwise in nature it cyclic and utilize and reutilize utilize uh, one and every time but due to the human intervention it become a, a cyclic nowadays then next function of the ecosystem is primary production. So the primary product productivity of an ecosystem is defined as the rate at which radiant energy is converted into the organic substances by photosynthesis or chemosynthesis by the primary producers. And when organic matter is produced by the plants, by the primary producers or plants, some of it oxidized or burnt inside their body and converted into the carbon dioxide which is released during the respiration and thus accomplished by loss of energy. And these respiration losses of the energy must because it is required for the maintenance of the organism. Now the producers are left with the little less organic matter than what was actually produced by them. So this is the primary function of the ecosystem in which the amount of uh, the energy or rendered energy is converted into organic substances by these primary producers with the help of photosynthesis is going to measure and this is the primary for production function of the ecosystem and this net primary production and the respiratory losses are added to give the gross primary production and this gross primary production is uh, subtracted 
from these respiratory losses gives net primary production of an ecosystem as shown here here npp that is net primary production is equal to gross primary production minus the respiratory losses and this is the primary production function of the ecosystem in which the organic substances are produced next secondary production so the food synthesized by green plants through the photosynthesis is the primary production which is eaten by herbivores means the primary in the product primary production the uh, ecosystem produce or uh, primary produ producer produce a food which is eaten by the herbivores and the plant energy used for producing the organic matter of the herbivores which in turn used by the carnivores the amount of organic matter stored by the herbivores or the carnivores uh, carnivores in excess of respiratory losses is known as secondary production in simple words the amount of organic matter stored by these herbivores or carnivores are nothing but the secondary production and the energy stored at consumer level for use of the um, use for the next trophic level is the secondary production then another uh, important function of the ecosystem is ecosystem regulation the ecosystem regulates themselves and maintain themselves under the set of environmental conditions however the ecosystem by itself tries to resist the change and maintain itself to the equilibrium with the environment due to the property known as homeostasis so homeostasis is the buffering ability of the ecosystem through which the ecosystem maintain themselves and try to resist their any change and maintain themselves in the equilibrium by the process known as homeostasis this homeostasis is the inherent property of all living systems to resist the change and these changes are within the range so within this range if any stresses tries to cause the deviation then the system has uh, system has its own mechanism to counteract these deviations which are known as negative feedback mechanism so this by this mechanism negative feedback mechanism if there is a uh, changes or deviation of any stress from the normal equilibrium one the ecosystem having mechanism which counteract this deviation known as negative feedback mechanism but if this stress is too high or beyond the range of the homeostatic plateau or homeostasis capacity then another type of mechanism known as positive feedback mechanism start operating so there are two mechanism negative feedback mechanism and positive feedback mechanism by which each and every ecosystem regulates itself and remain in a homeostasis condition so the positive feedback mechanism adds to the stress condition and tend to the take system away from the optimal conditions human beings should try to keep the ecosystem within the homeostatic plateau they should not contribute to the positive feedbacks otherwise the ecosystem will be collapse so human have to control the ecosystem within the homeostatic plateau and does not try to contribute the positive feedback mechanism of the homeostasis otherwise the ecosystem will collapse so this is the brief in brief the mechanism of the ecosystem regulation as its uh, self regulatory mechanism by the ecosystem then last is ecological succession so what is ecological succession this ecological su succession defines as the order orderly process of change in the community structure and function with the time mediated through the modifications in the physical and physical environment and ultimately culminating in the stabilizing ecosystem known as climax so this ecological succession is a process by which the changes in the community structure and function mediated with time through different modification in the physical physical environment and ultimately culminating in the stabilizing ecosystem so this process is known as the ecological succession 
and the whole sequence of the communities which are transitory are known as serial stage or serous whereas the community establishing first of all in the area is called as pioneer community so this process of ecological succession when there are two types of community first one is a serial stage and second one is a pioneer community if the um, whole sequence of communities which are transitory as known as serial stage or serious whereas community established first in the new area or in the area are called as pioneer community and this ecological succession starting on the different types of the areas or substrata are named as follows according to the different uh, areas or substrata where the ecological succession succession starts are named differently first the hydrac or the hydrocere this starting with water area like pond swamp etc so if this ecological structures uh, succession start in the pond or swamp area then it is called as hydrac or the hydrocere then major the starting in area of adequate moisture then jerac or jerocere uh, jerocere they starting in the dry area with little moisture and they can be of following types this jerocere uh, is again divided into three types the lithocere starting with the bedrock as litho indicate bedrock then samasuri the starting with the sand and then halocere starting with the saline soil so these are the different uh, ecological succession according to different type of area or sub uh, substrata where the ecological succession starts then process of uh, succession ecological succession this process of ecological succession start with the uh, nudation it is the uh, development of the bare area without any life form so nudation is the first process in which the nude area or bare area is uh, started in the development of any life form then second one is a invasion it is the establishment of one or more species on that nude or bare area through the migration followed by the establishment and the migrations means the migration of seeds is brought by, by wind water birds or any forces and in case of in the process of invasion the establishment of the species is takes place in the bare area then uh, next is uh, competition and coaction this competition as the number of individual species grow in the barren area there is a competition with the same species and the, between the different species of the space for the water nutrition and other factors also so this third process is third step is competition and coaction last uh, fourth phase is uh, fourth step of the ecological succession is reaction the living organisms take water nutrients and grow and modify in the environment is known as reaction and this modification becomes unsuitable for the existing species and favor some new species which replace the existing species this leads to the serial communities so this is the different type of actions where one species is replaced or modified by other species and last one is the stabilization it leads to the stable community which is in the equilibrium with the environment so these are the uh, process of the ecological succession so thanks friends this video is for educational purpose only references are as below thanks once again